It is not a secret that COP26 is a failure. What will it take for the people in power to wake up? That's Greta Thunberg sharing her message with other youth climate activists in Glasgow today. As we mentioned earlier in the program, thousands of young people from around the world took to the streets in protest, calling out world leaders for the lack of action inside the walls of COP26. So tonight we wanted to go beyond the headlines with four climate activists who were there today and have been in Glasgow all week. Sadie Vipond is from Calgary, Leonie Bremer, Germany, Sofia Gutierrez is from Colombia, and Jaka Pita Kandaga from Namibia. I spoke to them earlier. Well, thanks to all of you for staying up late and, uh, and, and agreeing to, to speak with us here. And uh, Leonie, let me start with you. What's it like to be a young climate activist at COP26? You know, we came here as Fridays for Future because we don't believe that the leaders will really change the system, but the people on the streets, the people power, that's, this will change the system. The people here are walking around like headless chicken, like planless, and are not achieving anything. But we are here, the Fridays for Future activists, really demanding the system change. Jacopita, what about you? What's the experience been like there? Um, for me, I basically just feel like um, it's been, uh, how must I say, it's been good to be here, uh, especially thinking that uh, we have had uh, previous COPs before. I honestly felt like even uh, previous years following up with the COP, I felt like we, uh, world leaders, they come here, they discuss things, but then things really, they really don't implement their policies when they go back to their country. So I feel like as Fridays for Future MAPA and Fridays for Future International, we are just here to put pressure on our world leaders to make the right decisions at the COP and to make sure that they follow through with the policies that they implement. Yes. So, Sophia, what about you? Uh, for me, it's a privilege to be here. Um, and I'm here alongside with all our different seven Colombian youth. But we are here out of privilege. We're here, but a lot of the Colombians were, are still in Colombia fighting and defending their territory in the front lines. We're here trying to make our voices be heard. We're here trying to tell our government what is really happening in our country because no one is taking anything serious. Everything is presenting these amazing plans, but they're forgetting about the people in their countries. They're forgetting about the human rights of their people. So for me, it's, it's a privilege to be here. And, and I hope that in the next COP, actually the decision-making processes includes the voice of those most affected. Sadie, you're the Canadian in our group, and the only reason you're not sitting next to the other three activists is just the logistics of, of uh, the buildings and the locations there. But, but I will ask you the same question, which is what is it like to be a, a young climate activist at COP26? It feels really empowering, really like I'm part of something bigger than myself. I am here to share my opinion and point of view on how our leaders have to look at the youth when making these big decisions. So all four of you have in common that you are climate activists, that you are young people, but uh, but you're from different parts of the world. And Jacopita, you're from Namibia. Tell me, you know, tell our Canadian audience, is there a particular environmental issue that is, is driving your activism? Um, honestly, thank you for that uh, specific question. Um, one of a particular environmental issue that is that really drove me here was the situation of oil drilling and exploration in Namibia. Uh, Namibia is a very semi-arid area and we really suffer from water scarcity. And one of the places that we really, like, we really have water in is like the Okavango Delta. But then for some reason, um, uh, Recon Africa, a Canadian company by the way, and our government, they are, they are trying to drill for oil in this area. And it's a very delicate area because it has uh, so much, it has water, it has all these ecosystems, and a lot of people depend on this area. So I feel like one of the reasons why I'm here today is just to fight to save the Okavango Delta and to stop like, the oil exploration in this area. As I understand it, the, uh, you have been involved, all of you have been involved in uh, demonstrations in Glasgow and in your home countries as well. And Sophia, I'm told that in Colombia, 
it, it, it can be dangerous to be involved in demonstrations. Uh, t tell us a little bit about that and why you continue to, to, to be part of visible protest back home. Uh, we have two scenarios. So the first scenario is those of us who can dream of getting, going back home after a protest, those of us who can try to get home after being in a hot zone, in a hot zone I mean police brutality and people disappearing, uh, gas getting in near us, into our eyes, into our skin. And that's, that's a privilege for us, that's the privilege of a protest, to be in a protest and dreaming of going back home. But for those in the front lines, they don't have that privilege because the war is in their homes, the conflict is directly in their houses, and if they don't answer to, like, if they react, they can get killed. Sadie, you're just 15 years old. Uh, any surprises for you at COP26? Well, it's been all very overwhelming, and <laughs> I, yeah, I have been learning so much, and I have met so many inspiring people, and yeah, I'm just here to talk to anyone who wants to talk to me and learn as much as I can, and it's, it's a really, really unique experience. And Leone, let me finish with this. Uh, you've been involved in the environmental movement for a uh, you know, relatively long time. You have some experience. I mean, you're obviously quite, quite young still. Um, realistically, what do you hope will come out of your involvement and, and the other people who are at the table, their involvement at COP26? You know, we are talking so much about system change and listening to ind indigenous people, listening to most marginalized people. But what we see here at COP especially is that white men, white people are in the power positions saying that they will do something about the climate. But literally, if we want to change the system, which we need to solve the climate crisis, we need to have MAPA, most affected people and areas, marginalized people in power position. Otherwise, we would copy the same mistakes and this would just replicate the system that has led to the crisis. Well, thanks to all of you for, uh, for speaking to our Canadian audience and for explaining uh, your perspective on COP26. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.